welcome to this episode of Zula Pillow Talk. Today's special guest is extra extra special to me and she's none other than our Singapore OG influencer, Wendy Cheng Xiaxue. Hi! Okay, so a little introduction about myself, I guess. Um, I was a blogger since, what, 2003? So that's a long, long time ago, that's what she means by OG. Um, and have been sort of on social media ever since and yeah, I guess that's my whole career, man. Yeah. Okay, so uh, she's probably already a familiar face to many of you, uh, but my job today is to unearth certain parts of her that hopefully even her most loyal of fans don't know yet. So do you think I can, you think I can get that out of you? I think you can. She definitely knows some stuff that other people don't know already because yes. we're very close friends. Uh, but whether you can get me to say it on camera is another thing. We'll <laughs> try, we'll try. Someone cannot cut if I accidentally say then, oops! I guess oops. it makes for good viewership. Oops! I will just punch you in the face <laughs> right now. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Have you always been this opinionated even as a child? What was growing up like for you? Mm, opinionated? I guess, yeah, I was pretty opinionated all along. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I was as forceful in just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's my way or the highway thing. So, um, yeah, I think, I think have, like my family, my family, my mom's pretty like, uh, open about what she thinks. She always just says what she thinks. My dad is really quiet man. Actually, I don't think he has that much opinions about things. Mm. Uh, but you know, I'm closer to my mom, and I think she always welcomes that I speak my mind. And the two of us are like not the kind of people who are like hold grudges. You know, we will always just if we're angry, we'll just say it kind mm. of person. So I think that sort of encouraged me to like speak up more. Um, because I don't have a fear of like, you know, if I say something wrongly, it's going to be held against me like forever, okay? Oh. Yeah. yeah, actually her and my mom have a very like close and cute relationship. Mm. So how about like the rest of your family? Are you close to your brother, your dad? Um, not that close to my dad. So like we talk basically like once a year, but we're not like Same. on bad terms. Like, Daddy yeah. issues. Yes. <laughs> mm, not sure if we should yes to that, but okay. <laughs> And my brother and I are okay, but we're not super close because we have a nine-year uh, gap. So my brother stays with my mum. Yeah. What are you talking about? We have an eight-year gap, what? Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but since growing up, it's always like, you know, he's a child when yeah. I am really like a teenager. So it's like, yeah, it just doesn't have that kind of chemistry, I guess. Actually, it's yeah. true. Me and my brother also have an eight-year gap and because of that, we don't, yeah. we're not like, the kind of super close siblings. Yeah, yeah, I used to take care of him when he was a baby. So it's like, I guess, yeah. Mm. Okay, well, that's interesting. Didn't really envision you as like the elder sister take care of baby brother sort. Oh, I, I really love him a lot when he was a baby. I always like love cuddling <laughs> him and holding his hand I everywhere. Know. Yeah. He had motherly instincts even that young. Will it, is, is that motherly instincts? I think so. Just I never liked, liked babies things. when I was a kid. I just like find them. I love it. They always smell so nice. And they are so like soft and cute. <laughs> Until they start like talking back to you and learning how to lie and stuff, then they are not cute anymore. Okay, not talking, not specifically mentioning her brother there. No, 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 not, not specifically my brother. Yeah. Okay. So how about like, where do you grow up? Any like, like um, mm. particular events that happened when you were growing up of importance? <laughs> It's not like you're asking me about my, where I lost my virginity. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not that, but you can tell us about that too. I don't okay. know that actually, uh, or do I? Okay, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I think, um, okay, so I grew up um, quite poor. I think not in a well wealthy family. So, um, stayed in a three-room flat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember staying in Teban Gardens. I was in Teban Gardens, staying in Teban Gardens, in a HDB three-room flat with my mom and my brother. And that was around the time that sort of started my blog. I was still staying there. Right. Yeah. So, I used to call it the armpit of Singapore oh because no. it's really freaking lock -hop. The you, you want to know the other parts? Yes. <laughs> the vagina is uh, Gelang. Oh. Uh, the asshole is Desker Road. And <laughs> then the, the boobs? Uh, no, the boobs. Uh, no boobs. Gender Just neutral, the, okay. So, the third worst is Tewan Gardens is the armpit. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, that's, that was why. La. Yeah. So, um, and then... <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad for the people saying that. But I <laughs> what? Gila re re relevant what? That's true, that's true. Okay, so um yeah, then I just remember there was a lot of like crime around the area. Uh, you wouldn't think of that in Singapore, but mm. now that I moved to the east, I really understand why the east siders think that the west side is 
truly the worst because it is. And that is coming from someone who stayed in the West all her life. And I guess if you maybe stay in those like more wealthy areas of the West, like maybe Holland Village or you know, mm. like Sunset Way, that kind of Atas place, then you won't feel it. But wow, I tell you, Tema Gardens is terrible. <laughs> so um what I, happened there? I actually got like molested a lot when I was a child. And like I, not a child, a like, teenager. So uh, which is really weird because I think I was quite ugly back then. But like, you know, I guess people don't really have discerning taste when it comes to young girls, lah, okay? So uh, I guess there were a lot of like like foreign workers mm-hmm. near where I was staying because the dormitory is at Pandan Gardens, I think, which is right next to Teban Gardens. Mm-hmm. So they would really populate the area around my place and like in general just very rowdy and saw a lot of like flashes and people. Like I really like the first time I saw somebody like, I saw an adult penis was when I was 12 years old, and the guy was just, like, am I allowed to say all these words? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, so he was just taking it out and just wanking it in the playground. Oh my god! In the freaking playground, eh. Then now that I think about it, right, I was in a freaking primary school uniform. Me and my girlfriends, we were being really wholesome and singing songs, singing, I remember we were singing a freaking Liu Te Hua song, okay? That was like era, okay? 1996. <laughs> this was primary 6, okay? 12 years old. Then, uh, he was just... Uh, maybe it was like mid thirties okay. to forties. This Chinese guy was just sitting down. He's not a foreign worker, lah, But he was just sitting down there, and he was looking at us while we were playing, and we just ignored him. We just thought it was weird, but we ignored him, and yeah. we, it didn't occur to us that he could be a sexual predator, right? Because we didn't know about such things. And then he sat there for a really long time, just watching us, watching us, watching us. And then suddenly, when I looked up, then it was so scary because we were on the merry-go-round, okay? And he came to sit next to us on the merry-go-round. It's, Fucker. And then he was touching his himself, right? And it was a split second before he sat down and then we turned, looked at him, and it occurred to all my girlfriends what was going on. Except you. No no no. Oh, Everyone right. like because we just looked and then suddenly oh, oh. <laughs> Okay. Then we just all ran for it. Like yeah, and like I was with two girlfriends, right? So what happened was everyone screamed <laughs> very dramatically. And then the sway thing is, right, the playground was round, right? So uh, our backpacks were like two on this side and mine was on oh this side. God. So they naturally ran towards their backpack and ran in that direction, which meant that I had to go this way and you turn back, right? And as it is, I'm already like a terrible runner and I have very short legs, okay? So I was the last lah, okay? So I had to U-turn, bypass that guy again, okay, who had still had his dick whipped out and run after my friends like, wait for me! Oh <laughs> Girls. my god! Yeah, so, I mean, okay, he's not a foreign water worker, but he did stay in the West, so still the West is the worst. Yeah, yeah that was my first, first time I saw an adult penis and I was so shocked by the appearance of it. I was just like, oh! How come it doesn't look like the kindergarten boys ones that I saw? How come you got see kindergarten boys penis before? Because uh, in kindergarten, we had shower times and the girls go first, then the guys. And sometimes in between, there's a bit of an uh, intermission where they are still changing and then we are going. And then you also like put Xiao Xin Kan Tao. Oh, yes. and, yeah, and I saw my baby brother's ma. Because oh, I changed right, him. Right, right, yeah, okay. so I, I remember that I just like Xiao Xiao like that, right? <laughs> then after that, I saw that guy, so I was like, mm, okay, mm. it's not, it's not it's like not that. It's not Xiao Xiao anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it was very angry and red. That's what I remember. Oh, dear. Yeah. Okay, so that was one thing that traumatized me. And I guess, like, a lot of times, like, you know, I, I just randomly would see people boinking, like, on SBS buses. Like, they would literally be ripping it out. Freaking mind blown, right? But yeah, yeah this is the way I saw. Actually, I'm very shocked at her stories, like mm. your, st- at your stories, lah. Because growing up, I really didn't experience any of that. You stay yeah. in the east. I stay all over, but never in the west in my life. So yeah. I've been in the north, northeast, in the east, everywhere. Yeah, right. I've never encountered like any flashes or yeah. anything. Flashes yeah. are very scary. So like, how yeah. often you like describe them to be? It's, it's quite, quite it's quite rampant, but yeah. that was in the past la. So it is probably like two decades ago. So maybe now it's a lot safer. But mm. I think for the foreign workers in Singapore, cause there's really safety in numbers for them, cause there's so many of them near where I stay. Mm. And if you get molested by one, it's really difficult to pinpoint who did it. Uh, most girls will just run away. So I, I do think that they get away with their crimes a lot. Mm. Yeah, and I think most of the time people at most will bring them to police station, but they won't pursue the case. Yes, true. Yeah. So. Uh, after a while, I just got very, very sick of this shit. And like, mm, there, there, like, worst ones, like, for example, I was 
in a lift and then I saw uh, like somebody flash me and it was very very horrifying because you think that that person is going to enter the lift with you and do yeah. other stuff to you and there's no way for you to escape because you are in the lift and he's outside there flashing he was standing outside there flashing me la. so it was very scary and like uh, always on buses like people would sit too close to you and like try to touch your leg and sh- mm. it's just horrible yeah but nothing bad la. nothing like super terrible la, but it's just irritating yeah Okay, then has there been any incident where you were sort of like put in a position where you yeah. could? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was there any um, incident that happened where you were put in a position where you could do something about it or you pursued it further rather than like maybe run away or scream and exit the situation? Yeah. Did you like confront anybody before? I really wish that for that primary school pedophile thing, right? I really wish I did something. Um, Okay, so the follow-up story to that was that we all ran and for some reason the person who was in front decided to go up a block, right? So I called up to my friends and then they said, let's, 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 let's run out here, you cannot find us. You don't know which story we oh go. My God. So, so we, went, we, we ran up the stairs and then he didn't actually follow us. La. Then we knocked on one of the doors. Uh, we knocked on several doors. A lot of them were empty. Then we knocked on one of the doors hoping that an adult can help us, right? And the first lady was like a lao auntie and then we were just like, oh my God, there's a guy like, you know, like downstairs molester. Blah blah, and she was just like, oh, "What are you trying to sell us?" Or like, "Why well, just slam the door in our face?" Oh dear, it's terrible, lor. Yeah. Then like the next lady was a uh, Indian auntie, and she let us in. She was very nice. She let us call our parents to go back, but she didn't seem too perturbed about this thing. Also, do you think maybe they also experienced it, and then they kind maybe. of maybe it was just very weird to me. But if if this happened to me right now as a mom, I will fucking pull the girls downstairs and make sure I catch the guy and yeah. make sure he goes to jail for twenty years. You know, like okay, he won't go to jail for twenty years, lah. But yeah, that's something I'm very passionate about. Child. Mm. Predators. Child predators. Yeah, yeah. should be in for life and castrated. Okay, anyway, yeah, back to the story. Yeah, actually, I, will, so, I, I know that you've always been very vocal about child predators, right? But it, I, it just occurred to me that perhaps it's because you know how real it can be because you experienced it yourself. Yeah. It's like you're like extra but the, 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 the thing is that it. I feel it didn't traumatize me that much. I am not like severely PTSD or yeah. scarred by it. Uh, I do have a fear of like uh, foreign workers now. Uh, suppose you can call that racism, but after you get molested by a lot of them, it is very difficult to not feel a bit of a fear when you get into a lift with one of them. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, I know it's not fair to them and most of them are perhaps like good guys, but yeah, I can't help how I feel. Anyway, so there was once um, I was in a bus and I think this is sort of like a little turning point in my life where uh, I was, it was the last bus, so it was very empty. When I got onto the upper deck of the bus, I was with one girlfriend of mine. We just finished our banqueting waitressing. So it was past midnight. Yeah. And there was one lady there who is maybe 23, I would say. Like she's older than us. We were about 18 years old. And there was one uh, foreign worker, mm. okay, who was harassing her. And she was sitting in one of the seats. He was sitting behind her. And his arm was like over her seat and like trying to, like just putting it there. Not actually touching her, but just obviously keep talking to her. Right. And he, I don't know what he's doing, lah, because he's not even talking English. So how can she, she even understand him? Like, she, she, like, he's still, he. Anyway, so, so she was leaning forward, like trying to avoid his arm. I was just like, what is this girl doing? Why yeah. don't you just leave? Yeah. So I walked up to her and I said, like, uh, no, I sat down with my friends first. We observed what was going on. And then we was like, my friend was just like, hey, should we like do something? And then, you know, I was just like, okay, fine. I walked up to her. I said, is he, is he bothering you? Like this guy. And then, which is actually really brave for a teenager to do. Because usually teenagers don't, don't bother about other people's businesses. Lah, okay. Mm. I rarely see teenagers do stuff like that. So it really worked out a bit of my courage to, to approach her and do that. Because, you know, like, I should just mind my own business, lah. Yeah. Okay, and she just was like, "Yeah, he is." Then I, then he, he's, he said in really broken English, "My, my friend, my friend," like that. Then I was like, "Is, is he your friend?" And then my friend, like my friend, scolded me. She smacked me, and she's like, <laughs> "Of course he's not." <laughs> like, why she asked her such a dumb question? And she was like, "No." Then I said, "Why don't you just move away from him?" Then she said, "I moved seats a few times already, but he kept following me." Then I was like, "Okay, can." Then I, uh, I said, "You, you go away." Then he was just like, he continued sitting there, um. I don't think you really could understand what we were saying. So I went downstairs the bus and I spoke to the bus driver. I said that there is a there's a like a Bangladeshi worker upstairs harassing us girls la. Can you do something about it? And this was after like ten minutes of tolerating him until I really cannot take it anymore already. Mm. So um we went down, then the to my surprise, the bus driver immediately stopped the bus. Wow. He told all the passengers, hold on for a second, and he went upstairs. And he yelled at the guy and said, you get out of the bus now. 
and the guy was just like trying to make excuses and trying to stay on lah because I'm sure he cannot get home because it was the last bus. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! As in, who cares? I'm not, not lazy. Like but that is the how you walk home ah. Then anyway, so <laughs> yeah, then he just like put him by the shirt and just yank him off lah. So he got off the bus all then. Um, I guess you know. Last time when I was like molested, I didn't really do anything about it because a part of me will always think, "What if people don't believe me? What if people say 'Ni jiang chou'? Why he still want to touch you? You, you think, think you what? Think okay, much, like, but I was young and I was not confident right. and I was just like, you know, Singaporeans don't generally make a lot of noise about our, our stance ah, about things like that. Mm. So I don't dare to bother adults with this kind of things. So usually when people touch me or like whatever, I just run away or go away lah. So. Mm. I mean, I don't sit there and continue letting them do it, but I won't kick out fast. So that was when I realized, eh, you know what? I can actually tell this uncle, and he didn't ask any questions. He didn't say, who, what, is this guy your friend, or like you know, like he didn't question anything. Yeah. So he just immediately stood up for me. So I realized that, okay, hmm, somebody screaming downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I I I kind of realized, you know, you really need to stand up for yourself and do something, ah. Uh, and if not, this guy will continue harassing people, mm. and he needs to be taught a lesson, lor. Yeah. So do you feel like that kind of was the birth of the Xiaxue moment? I think a little <laughs> bit of me started to be more like, if you don't fight for yourself, nobody really yeah, will. Yeah, got do something yeah. about it. And if you let people go away with this kind of behavior, they will continue doing it. Somebody needs to stand up. Hmm. And say something. So now, if I believe wrongly something, I will just say it lah. I don't yeah. really care whether there's consequences to it. You know, I just want to say my piece. Oh, yeah. Actually, I also feel that what the uncle did was very commendable. Yeah. Because it would be so discouraging yeah. if you tell the uncle, then he just be like, then you just come downstairs or yeah. don't bother, right? Yeah, then yeah, he just yeah. be like, shit. Yeah. If even I do something, nobody cares. Then yeah. you maybe the uncle really changed my life because he's <laughs> uncle. I mean, not just uncle. Yeah, I don't know who he is, but I mean, good job lah. I mean, yeah, if he he if he has scolded me or something. Yeah. Uh, say ni jiang pen ni wei shen me liu zai shang mian, you know, like oh, then, no. yeah, yeah, then maybe I would have been like, oh, you know, I, yeah, okay. Then actually, I feel that you're a pretty loyal friend, and I can imagine you. Mm-hmm. I am. I'm not trying to <laughs> praise her. I try to go into another topic as I as okay. I start with something to ease her into it. Was. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, and I feel that like um. I can imagine you. I can imagine you standing up for me and and basically doing what's right if I. If I feel like um I cannot voice my opinion lah, like mm. it has it has come across uh it has happened a few times where, uh she has basically spoken up for me, so generally I think that she's a good friend. But you know like um in the recent years, like maybe the past five years or so, mm. there have been some, uh friendship incidents with other public figures, mm. that so <coughs> may have portrayed you in a light where it looks like maybe you were not such a good friend or you were like you broke up some friendships or, mm. uh. I mean, yeah. Basically, I'm just trying to talk yeah, about the yeah, two-two yeah, thing. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm just going to go straight into it. Yeah. <laughs> Although it has been spoken about a couple of times before, but right. is there, like, maybe you want to tell us? Mm, I guess, yeah. So, ooh, it's difficult, la, kind of being in our line, I feel. Mm. Um, you know, because, like, we are not only just friends, we are also colleagues, right? And we are also competitors, in a sense. So... When money is involved, I think friendship just turns a bit more complicated. Right. And I think uh, I mentioned before that you know a lot of the whole Chu Chu issue and and the Yutaki and Sophie issue thing, the fallout was a lot to do with um, like the Nafneng thing. So mm. that has sort of like a money element to it lah. Yeah. So that time Nafneng or rather Net Centric was like suing. Uh, Chu Chu, and it was a very tense period for her because I was very good friends with boss. I, I am very good friends with boss Ming, um, yeah, who owns Naf, uh, Netcentric. So um, it just got very tense, lor. And then I guess another famous friendship that sort of broke up was the one with KK. Okay. Um, and I think that people, yeah, that one was cause I feel like um, that was definitely cause of the influencer like industry because when I knew her she wasn't an influencer and um, okay like, I do believe that it's probably because of me that I kept link- linking her on my blog and everything that sort of like propelled her to fame and I sort of didn't really like the person that she was becoming uh, not that it's objectively she's the worst person it's just she has changed and it just wasn't the original person that I thought was my good friend lah. Mm. and um, a lot of Things were really tense because she would get a little bit uh, competitive in a way. Uh, not really like 
you know, but just just little statements here and there will be like just irksome to me. It will just be like things like she'll ask me like, oh, uh, how much is Chup Chup paying you for a uh, tweet? Then like I would say the amount and then she will just be like, huh, so much? Like that. Aww. And it would just, it's just very small, but like it's so much as in so much compared to hers. Like that's what I feel like because she's asking me because she's also getting paid ma. And I'm just like, bitch, you would be getting zero if not for me, you know? Like, how can you say that mine is like too much, you know? But I mean, to her defense, she has explained to me that she's just exclaiming because she thought, wow, her her money is good, but you know, but at that point, I was just like, fuck, do you mean by too much? Then it was just small, small little things like that that added up together, and um, it just really made me so uncomfortable when she suddenly just told me, oh, I I want to be an influencer too, like, um, yeah, because I feel like it's a good. Career move lah, you know, and mm, I want to be supportive to her. Uh, but it's just really weird when that's my thing, and she has her thing, and I think that she many parts of her really wins me already, and this is my thing that <laughs> is me, and it you have to remember that this is early, early, early on where there are very, very few influencers, yeah. so it's not as common as it is now, you know, where every other person has an Instagram yeah. account. In the past, very few people have blogs, so I, I can count maybe. Less than ten famous like bloggers, and she wanted to be a blogger. And Instagram is so easy; everyone has what it takes to be an Instagrammer, right? You just have to post some nice photos. But blogger is a little bit more difficult. It's you have true. to be a lot more dedicated, and you have to specially make an effort to do it. Like she suddenly just told me she was doing it. I was just like, "What the fuck?" Like yeah. you know, yeah. So I think mm, when I say it out loud like that, I know it sounds very very selfish, and so. At that time, I was just telling myself, like you know, I should be more supportive of her. So outrightly, I was lah, and I tried to talk to a lot of people to say, like you know, is it me that's being the asshole here that I'm feeling really uncomfortable about this? And they're just like, you know, what if one day she has more viewers than me? How, am I supposed to still feel happy for her? What well, she takes over as top, you know? Obviously, she didn't lah, but still, it's just that idea that she could, and it was me who who put her there. Never knew, never knowing that she would one day. Try to do this to me, right, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that was that law. But I guess it didn't like really like. I mean, nowadays I do think a little bit more about who I want to sort of promote if I post about anybody. Uh. But it didn't stop me from still doing it, lah. And just trusting that you know friends wouldn't do that to me. And I think nowadays it's like everyone's an influencer anyway, and the industry is a lot bigger now. So that's the 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 pie is a lot bigger. And there's enough money to be earned by everyone, lah. So, um, yeah. And sometimes it's like really about the kind of respect that I feel like for the person as well. So I feel like if you are really, really hardworking, I respect that you're really like dedicated. You're doing a good job. Then, you know, you deserve lah to earn something out of it, lor. I guess. Mm. Yeah. So that was another friendship, lah. I guess. Yeah. I don't know whether I talked about this before. Maybe not. About the whole KK thing. Yeah. I think bits and pieces, but yeah. never really in conclusion. Mm. Like. Why? Uh, I think so. It sort of accumulated and it resulted in me one day being so irritated with her for her Twitter because she kept going on about how she was having like banner ads or I can't remember what she was like, like selling slots on her blog or like whatever. I can't remember what it was, but she just kept saying how it was overwhelmingly successful, and I was so annoyed with it that I just decided to unfollow her. And um, I thought she wouldn't realize it, but she did lah. Then um. It resulted in her asking me like, "What's going on?" She was really, really hurt. And then when I told her my feelings, she was just like, "You know, like," she said, "Okay, let's try to work things out." And um, and she was really, really nice about it actually. So um, yeah, but she was really very, very, very upset lah. So I, I really believe that when we were friends, she really treasured me as a friend a lot. Um, but and then we actually worked over that. She actually knew my feelings already, and she still said, "You know, I, I feel like." I am at a point in my life. I'm older than you. She's older than me by two years, and she said, "You have your career set for you. I am just a part-time model. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, and I can't continue being a model forever. And I really hope that you can try to be supportive, lah. And I said, I am trying to be supportive, but it's just sometimes the things that you say, it really is a bit irritating, lah. When you talk about how how popular you are, like how th- whatever you post sells out, and just like." Allow it, like seriously, you know, um, things like that. I didn't tell her so specific things, lah, but just small, small little things. And she said, "Okay, I'll be a bit more mindful," and she really was. And things improved for a while, but then, 
it is still she's still a changed person. She's became KK the influencer, not KK the part time model, mm. uh, the girl that I played mahjong with that nobody knew and now people know her. So it's like it just got very strained and eventually I think mm, both of us were quite unhappy and uh, she didn't tell me but she was actually very upset that uh, you know I wasn't supportive. She felt that I was being very selfish. Um, yeah, she said that um, later on uh, she told me she was like oh um, you know you have like everything going on for you in your life like you have a good yeah you are getting married already like i don't have a stable boyfriend i don't have a stable career you earn like a stable income and like why why can't i just have one thing you know she she doesn't feel that way lah. but to me it's just like i felt she was prettier than me she was hotter than me she's smarter than she's an rgs girl uh what makes you think that she's not going to be more successful than me in this field like i guess like Speaking to a lot of people, they all said like, you are being crazy lah, like, you know, you have your own forte wa. she cannot just overtake you like that. Um, but I guess I wasn't feeling very confident lor. Yeah, mm. sorry, they're going about this for too long maybe. No, I think it's okay, it's very interesting eh, like, okay. to know. Uh, I think anyway, you've addressed the whole uh, thing with Chuchu in other interviews already, mm. but never really heard you talk that much about KK. Yeah. And despite it being, uh, happening, like, it has happened years and years ago lah, but... Definitely, I think some people are still wondering about it. Yeah, I do think that it's a very interesting situation that you are put in. Lah. It's just like, for example, if you are the top chicken rice seller in Singapore, right? And you are my good friend, so mm. I let you taste my chicken rice, and I let you into my life, and you know how I cook it. You know that certain, uh, if I go to this kampong to get this chicken, it's very tasty, and blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly one day you tell me, I want to also sell chicken rice. That's how it felt like to me yeah. at that point. You know, it's not like so easy, like, Currently, like everyone has an Instagram account. I'm telling her, no, you cannot have Instagram. It's not like that. It, it felt true. more like the chicken rice situation. Yeah. So, um, and then suddenly it's like, you flash, 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 flash. Like, I, I shouldn't have told her where to go and buy the fucking chicken rice, uh, where to get my, my mi fun from, how long to cook the rice, like, you know, um, where to, which is the compound to go and get the chicken. And I realized that all these things are the stuff that I have accumulated over the years by trial and error by myself. Like, what camera to use, what, what blog platform to use. She would just ask me these questions and I'll just tell her. And it's just suddenly she has all this knowledge at hand, plus the fact that I gave her. A boost like, yeah, in definitely. popularity. Yeah. So then I realised, oh my god, so stupid. You know, like, I never knew that this would happen. Like. I think at that point, you just didn't think so much. Uh, because yeah. like you said, she was just a friend that you played Mahjong with, then her popularity kind of, like, accelerated on its own. Uh, didn't really mm, think. But yeah. then again, I did see you posting about her. My super hot friend, yeah, KK. Yeah, I so, was... Like, I mean, she's my my good friend, really, really yeah. good friend. And I, of course, want the best for her lah. So if I post more about her, I hope that maybe she can get more, like, hosting jobs or, like, modeling jobs. I just didn't think she was going to be a blogger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or rather, I don't mind if she actually blogs, but she specifically told me she wants to make that as a career. Like, she yeah. wants to start blogging and earning money out of it. And at that point, right, that idea that you should start a blog just for the sole purpose of earning money out of it, that really already irritated me. So when I spoke about respect just now, I feel like I would respect you if that is what you want to do instead of what you want to earn money from. So I, at the starting point, I was already, already felt very irritated already. Like you shouldn't yeah. be doing this just because you want to earn money. You should be passionate about it. Lah. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a very purish kind of point of view from last time, which it doesn't exist anymore yeah. nowadays. Uh, because I come from the era where everyone around me started doing it because including you because they like doing it because and they became famous for it because they are good at it uh, at drawing the attention of people they are interesting their lives are interesting that's how they became popular and it's not because they they think that there's money to be earned because mm. when we started there was no money to be earned <laughs> like zero nobody knew that you could earn money out of it yeah so yeah, well. yeah we just like the attention frankly yes, speaking. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah and also sharing, uh, I do think that we have uh, mm. like love for sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's really therapeutic when you say something and people reply you mm. with their point of view or agreeing with you. It really makes you feel a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then I have another question for you uh, uh, to sort of like wrap up those other friendships. Lah, okay. Mm. Uh, I think a lot of people want to know what's your current state with them like? Is it hostile? Is it friendly? And will you ever <laughs> be friends with them again? <laughs> you know, weird twist of fate. I guess KK had and that group, Chu Chu, Yu Dagi, they are quite close friends now. They are, they are friends. It appears uh, to be so. Yes, yeah. So, mm, I, good for them. I'm happy that they are happy. Are I you? Guess. 
Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, yeah. <laughs> I, no la, I mean like, it's fine lah, I guess. Yeah, but um, the last thing that happened was that we kind of had a meet-up to trash things out. Mm, it was very, like, dramatic actually that our... I think I uh, we all said not to talk about it, so I cannot really oh, remember. But, um, sorry, I got dementia. No, I purposely want to betray you all. Anyway, yeah, so... Uh, it was okay. I would say that it ended well. Yeah. Mm. So um, that meetup was pretty good for me because I was I harbored a lot of anger at them at how they handled the end of the friendship. I felt like I did nothing to deserve. Mm. Oh, sorry. How Could they... you just clarify who them? Oh, okay. Is? Them meaning KK is no longer my friend, right? So mm. that that's fine with her. Um, but I think KK harbored a lot of hate towards me because of the gush cloud thing, lah. So that's KK's side, lah. Okay. And but. For the Chu Chu Yutaki group, uh, and Sophie, and I guess Miyake, uh, mm. it was like I was very, very angry with how things ended because we were friends. One day they decided not to be friends. Nobody told me anything, and they just started to tweet like cryptic shit about me, or not tweet like post cryptic shit about me on Instagram. I was just like, what the flying okay. fuck? So I have a lot of anger about that. And after speaking with them, um, I realized a lot of the things that were going on behind the scene and a lot of misunderstandings. They think I did this or like, you know, I wish I didn't mean it that way or I didn't do. Or like, I think that they did this but maybe they didn't mean it that way or they didn't do. So, same thing. So, and then plus, um, one of the members, I won't say who lah, was going through like, okay lah, actually, a few of them were going through really tough mental times and which caused them to act more irrationally lah. So, um... I think uh, I, I felt like I forgave mm. like a bit okay. and they did apologize for the way things was handled and from their point of view they actually told me that it wasn't supposed to be the end of the friendship they, they just actually wanted to take a break but because I was so tormented I just felt like they were so cold to me I just really really wanted to know what the fuck is going on you know actually at this point they said that they didn't want to end the friendship they just wanted to not talk to me for a while and let things cool lah yep. Uh, but I couldn't take it. I just was like, what is going on? What is going on? And then until to the point where it became so hostile that it just cracked. Mm. You know, so um, that was that. Lah. But I feel it is very difficult to accept that your friend wants to take a break from you. Lah. That is, yeah. th- that will already make you feel like you want to drift away from that friend because you'll feel that that friend doesn't like you anymore. Yeah. So it's just like a, a milder breakup, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but it was okay. So I guess the current situation is that we are not hostile, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are you knocking me because... No, 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 I sense it not. Okay. The, I thought she... It was not a hint for anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess that's that all. Then they are friends, then we don't really speak. Okay. But um, if I see them, I still wave, I guess. Yeah, okay. so say hi. Yeah. So basically, it's no chance of being BFFs again. I I don't think I want to ever do that. Um, Definitely not BFFs, um, yeah. but I don't think I want to go into that again. I think that okay. it's very difficult when there's so much history and so much bad blood. And mm. um, and the fact that they are a group makes me feel very insecure that they were just going to do the same thing. That's so true. the dynamics is there. Lah. Yeah. But I guess uh, eventually I got like back my friendship with Sophie. So that's nice. Mm. Yeah. So we are both very close to Sophie now. Mm. Mm. Okay, so another question I think people will want to know, right, is that because you had these, like, public fallouts with these uh, other, like, influencers before, mm. um, does it make you, like, not want to be close to, to, to be in another clique again where that could potentially happen? Yeah. Because uh, currently, you kind of are in one now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm, I, I mean, do you worry that your friends in the group were, might, might do I, the same thing to you? Of course, lah. I mean, I think it is something that it's pretty scary when it happens to you. Imagine you have a group of friends that you literally speak to every day, you know, every single thing about your life and suddenly all of them bunch up together and decide to ditch you out of the group. It is a very scary thing to happen to anyone. Um, and then you start to think, is it me, something wrong with my character, you know, like, what is, what is wrong, you know? Mm. And um, yeah, it's scary lah, but you know, I don't know how it happened, but it just happened. And I guess, you know, just having this idea that like try to do preventive measures law like sometimes i will just be like you know maybe i shouldn't say too many things or you know like try to choose people who are not going to do this kind of stuff to you like you can agar know in your bones whether people are the kind of vengeful people who will do stuff like that and jessica is a bit uh too ditzy 
Excuse so. you. <laughs> she is she's um not the sort who will uh, go and like like go and write shit about you like, after the friendship ends. She's just not that kind of person. So I have seen her end a friendship with somebody really toxic in her life and I never see her post anything about that person, so I guess I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have this like a uh, four person kind of like uh, group, little friendship like, group, like little friendship group lah. So far, two years still going strong. So yeah, let's I see mean, how long it lasts. Tell them who it is lah. They will be very confused. Okay, uh, so it's Mongo Bong, me, her, uh, her Sophie. being Xia Xie, of course, and Sophie. Sophie. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're pretty close, and I guess good thing about Sophie is um, I really appreciate that when the friendship ended. Although I didn't do anything personal to her, so lah, but. She really never joined in, mm. and I never had a feeling that she was um, getting glee out of the Schadenfreude or like whatever it's called, you know. Yeah. Like she wasn't getting like happiness out of my misery, whereas I felt very strongly that the rest were, mm. and they they had this like power trip thing going on where. Okay, where are you now, Queen B? Like you know, it's us against you, and we are strong. Like you are weak. Because you're alone, so I I felt that way. Maybe it wasn't true, but I, it it felt that way to me. That's why it was very hurtful. Um, but I never felt that Sophie was doing that to me. I never felt that she derived any joy out of it, and she certainly didn't write anything bad about me. So um, now that I'm being very close to her again, I feel safe, lah. Mm. Yeah, that she wouldn't do that to me. Okay, yeah. oh, that's nice to know. And I think um, probably your viewers can see that that you are happier, like you mm. know. I think it's hard to move on from a uh, like friendship group when there's no closure, mm, right? Like yeah. previously before you met up with them, you don't really really know what happened or mm. or like how yeah. to move on from it. And then now I I I do honestly feel that as your friend, I feel that after that you you generally seem happier lah. Yeah, like that's I'm, not like a weight that you carry around. I was very upset for a very long for a while lah, like quite a while, um and. It, the the I wasn't like depressed or mm. anything, but it was just something that was bugging me, and it became gradually worse. It was like a cancer, mm. so it was and and it lasted for like a long time before yeah. it finally really ended, like a year. So I would say that since Chuchu got pregnant, she started to drift from the group already. Okay. Yeah. So that group was kind of like broken since then, and yeah. then the nothing thing came, and then it just got worse, lor. Yeah. Anyway, I think like what a lot of people think about um like a lot of a question that some people may think may have lah is sorry uh, I burped. I think <laughs> probably can hear because the mic is damn near. Yeah. Okay, so a question I think probably people have is like, is she the problem in friendships? Is that why it fell apart? I think it's very repulsive for her to say, no, I'm not the problem. <laughs> it's them. So like, I think I just sort of speak on her behalf as a friend, and I feel that actually she's a pretty good friend. Like she's there for you when you need her, and she gives you some advice and doesn't really sugarcoat things when you know harsh things need to be said. So. Uh, I don't really. F- I feel that it's just the dynamics of the friendship. Sometimes, ah, uh. sometimes it's it's people, it's easier. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's also the fact that we are like competitors, and money mm. is involved and everything, right? So sometimes it's like, it's just, like, you know, yeah. Sometimes maybe you like, oh, are you trying to steal this kind from me, or like, you know, this kind of like little things that wouldn't happen to a normal group of friends. Yeah, who don't work in the same yeah exactly. same industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. And we both of them chill about money, so that's not really. Yeah, a problem. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I don't really care about money, but. I think one of the issues was that Chu Chu felt like she really couldn't trust me lah, cause of the nothing thing, um, and cause I had shares in nothing. She felt like uh, my advice to her during the suit was that to just do according to to stay with the contract and not try to break the contract, and um, so that she wouldn't get sued. Because I understood that it was a lot of money that I think she couldn't. It was it's just unnecessary money to spend like a lot a lot of money, and. Yeah, so I rather she just I my advice to her was that she should just stay with the company lah. Yeah, but she she probably felt like I had some ulterior motive to it because I had shares in the company, but that really wasn't why. Um, but it doesn't matter because she can never know my intentions and I can never really show her my true intentions or so. So she can think whatever she wants, I guess. Uh, yeah, and the sh- the sad thing is, you know what? The shares are worth nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it wasn't even worth that much because I had like, uh, my my eccentric shares were like zero point zero point zero seven percent. I think that confidential is confidential information being released right now. That is freaking <laughs> little, dude. This is not even zero point one, eh? Not one, not zero point one. It's zero point zero seven. Yeah, how freaking pathetic <laughs> that is. Yeah. So I was just like, ugh. Okay. Well, we wouldn't know as like outsiders how much like zero point zero seven is worth. 
you know. It's worth nothing if nobody wants to buy it. At one point, it was doing well, ma. Yeah. Uh, okay lah. Yeah, I guess it listed so. Yeah. Okay. So moving on from like friendships, how mm. about personal relationships? How's the marriage with Mike? Does he like being in the limelight? <laughs> oh, marriage is fine, I guess. Uh, Mike definitely doesn't like being in the limelight, which is why I don't really like post that much stuff about him. Although, weirdly enough, any post with him uh, is like significantly damn high the likes. I don't know why. Love sells. Why? Huh? People just like people love seeing people in love or like. That's so weird. I hate why? it. Why? Why? Why do you hate it? I mean, I think people believe in your love story. Y'all be like. Happily married for X amount of years, ah. they, are, they know that you're not doing it just for the gram, like you're actually married, you know. All oh, right. <laughs> that makes it a bit less gross, like when you see people oh, being very PDA. Oh, yeah, then, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, it's true, like, I guess if I see like a couple like posting about how much they love each other, it's quite sweet, also. Sometimes I'll give a like, I guess. Yeah. You better like my post. <laughs> <laughs> but you rarely do it anyway. Okay, like, sometimes you do that. Um, yeah, but yeah, he, he doesn't, he's an introvert, like, completely. So, he doesn't like like taking photos. He's very very awkward when he takes photos, and we are actually really pretty much polar opposites of each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very weird like, how we got together. So I guess, um, what was your question? Ah? oh yeah, my marriage is fine, and he doesn't like that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so he's not the insta husband lah. He's definitely not lah. He's the freaking furthest thing away from the insta husband <laughs> lah, and. I don't think I want him to be either because I feel like I'm the kind of girl who wants um, I feel it is a bit uh, emasculating for men to be an insta husband uh, for me personally okay maybe other girls don't feel it that way but I'm entitled to how I feel lah okay so and I feel like if you are constantly taking photos of a girl being her slave and like sort of like listening to her instructions on what to do mm. uh, it a bit like very difficult to feel very respectful of the guy and when I don't have that kind of like like you don't have the kind of alphaness I don't feel that attraction to you so like I, I that's just how I feel lah so um, but maybe I am just trying to comfort myself because he can never be trained to be a Easter husband so <laughs> yeah yeah I get it like, yeah. my boyfriend also cannot be Insta boyfriend. Okay, wow, Derek is quite, like, nice. He'll help you take photos. <laughs> He's definitely a lot more patient than Mike. Mike really finds that it's a complete waste of his time. He has zero interest doing it. And he has zero interest on trying to be good at it also. And he's really, 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 really bad at it. But over the years, um, I sometimes tell him that I don't have a choice. It's my work. I know you think it's very superficial and shallow and dumb and a complete waste of time. But it's what I have to do. And you have to just suck it up and be the photographer like for example if we are on a sponsored holiday you get a free air ticket you get free accommodation you get free meals that is what your job is your job is to be my photographer so you have to because i don't have anyone else doing that and I, you're the last person i would ask but no choice right rather you than a tourist so yeah lot then he will just say okay i'll do it and i'll i'll be like you you cannot just promise me that you'll do it you have to promise me that you will do it in good grace because i don't want to have to deal with your tantrum you know, it's your job. You you agree it's your job. You sign here, ah. Okay, <laughs> then can we go forward with the holiday? If not, ah, Jessica go on the holiday with me. Yeah, who <laughs> have very happy to take a photo. Yeah, so like that, lor. <laughs> okay, so you guys sort of like worked it out already, lah. Yeah, like and he does do it in good grace, lah, when okay, he has to. That's nice. Uh, so his his personal philosophy to uh taking a good shot is to take many, many like a like a thousand shots. That is good. Yeah, like so thinking. he just <laughs> like, and then he try to move it a little bit here and there. Uh, but sometimes it's just like, you know, for example, I have gel side on my face and he will just take a thousand <laughs> shots of it and I'm just like, do you not see I burst shit on my face? <laughs> and he will just be like, I thought that's what you want. <laughs> oh my god, such yeah, a yeah, mic thing to yeah, say. Yeah. yeah. But it's very like, factual and yeah. like, everything he says is well, a wouldn't know ma- if matter of fact tone. Yeah. We wouldn't yeah. know if that's the new trend that he would say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Hello. How about like, um, being a mum, you know, because... That's kind of new-ish, okay lah. It's just not really it's been five years. Mm. But how do you find being a mom in the public eye? Is it kind of stressful? Because, you know, everybody's very judgy when it comes to parenthood. I guess, Parents yeah. Like Actually, that. you know what? I feel like I've been posting a, a lot less about Dash now. So like you, to, you have it, yeah. yeah. Because it's so difficult to photograph him. So running around all the time. And the things that you have to say is a lot less because they're hitting less milestones. Mm. So it's just like, oh, okay lor, like, yeah, and then I just also like to protect his privacy lah because yeah. it's like he's getting older and I think as a baby, he's 
famous, never mind, nobody will remember Ma when he's older. But like as he's growing older, it's more and more easy to recognize him. So I just oh. don't want to supply too much information about him. Yeah, but I would say yes, like in the start, people are very, very judgy, especially when you have a newborn. Mm. Everyone is trying to teach you how to be a mom. It's like non freaking stop advice, advice, advice. And I know where they're coming from because they're just concerned about a baby. So they think that maybe if you're new, you would like some advice. But bitch, I never asked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that like especially now on Instagram, um, everyone is posting about their parenthood on Instagram. Um, I think it's getting worse because everyone on Instagram is is trying so hard to kind of show that they are such a good parent. I know and right? how involved yeah. they are. And it just makes you feel so guilty because you feel like you're not as like proactive as them, not as hardworking as them, you know, not buying freaking organic vegetables <laughs> and I don't know what else they do lah. Yeah. Fouling toenails with a fowl that is from Japan that will not hurt babies or something. Yeah. Actually that's interesting to know that like uh, now you're sort of protecting Dash's privacy because at the start mm. he was such a famous baby and I think people always assume that you're gonna make a personality out of him also. At least that's what I thought. Because uh, right. at that point in time we were not friends lah when mm. she had her baby and I just thought that Oh, you know, Sash is like little prodigy son. He's gonna be the next influencer. Oh gonna, my god! I really thought that was gonna happen. That he's gonna be like That's a so six-year-old funny. that is like running around IG storying himself. Oh my god! I'm with Mama at the supermarket. That's oh, you know, so gross. Like that. I don't know. Yeah, I just okay. thought so. it's my personal thing, right? I really hate kids who are very action Barbie. <laughs> like once they kind of lose their like whole innocence, I I just feel like they are no longer cute. Whatever they do, it feels like there's a motive, there's a manipulation to it. There's, they're trying to make you like them. They're trying to act cute. They're not. It's not cute out of like a pureness. Uh. And I just feel it's bad. <laughs> so I'm glad that he t- didn't turn out like that because his character is really not like that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I didn't actually when I first started posting his picture, right? I I really didn't think too much about it. Like, I didn't think about the privacy thing or like whatever. Um, it didn't occur to me there was. Because I am so open with my life. So I guess it didn't occur to me there's anything wrong with being in the public eye. So when I fo- posted the first photo, I was just so excited to share it with of people. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, what what he looked like and everything. Yeah, so um, after that, I just continued. Lo, and to me, it was such a fun thing to do because I was documenting him. Mm. And I love looking back at his old photos. And you know, every time before I stay, I just go through his photos. Mm, what he I really posted. does this yeah. all the time. Yeah, whenever I'm bored, I'll just look at his baby pictures also. Yeah, she's got like, st- she still has raging maternal instincts. Like, always cooing over babies. Yeah, I love babies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, how about, what do you think of our influencer industry now because it's been more than a decade since you started you've seen it go through the different stages Mm -hmm. and it has really morphed a lot kind of like from blogging Mm. to then now what mainly instagram right i would say it's the main platform yeah i would say instagram i guess some people are also on like facebook and like twitter i guess or youtube youtube is quite big oh yeah yeah youtube sorry i forgot about youtube (laughs) we are on youtube (laughs) oh right this show is on youtube too Mm. okay but um okay so my question is what do you think of the fact that like there are so many influencers now and people who like you know were not are not really doing it because they love sharing or connecting with people blah 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 they just want to be famous want to earn money want to get want to get sponsors like this is a very common thing right yeah. that a lot of like young girls want to do I want to open Instagram account and get sponsors I think that now that it is so well known that you can get a lot of good stuff out of being an influencer it's inevitable that this sort of person will exist lah. Uh, but I do think that their life will be very miserable if they don't genuinely like sharing. Mm. Um, they will just not have a passion for their job law and they will just be like any other person who is very miserable in their job law. So, yeah, I think that that's fine. And I do think that looking back at our blogging years, right, mm. um, you see a lot of bloggers are very unprofessional. Yeah, I mm. remember, right? <laughs> really, really. Okay. They're so bad. Like, because bloggers uh, consist of a lot of very, very dumb girls. I don't know why. Okay, I blame myself. I think I started <laughs> I started the the ball rolling. Because in the past, bloggers are like doctors, la, poli- like people who are talking about politics. Oh, la, all with this, like, real information yes, to share. Like, smart people, you know. <laughs> and then I was the first bimbo that came and talked about my life and the boys that I like I and know. the clothes that I buy. <laughs> 
I realised how horribly bimbo it was because I would literally say, hey, these are all the stuff that I bought from Forever 21. I took individual photos of every single item that I buy, including the price. It's so dumb. So that started the ball rolling for a lot of young girls who shared their lives and a lot of them are so freaking stupid. Like, so dumb. Like, really, they cannot even speak English properly. And I remember there was this camera event, they were doing an ad, okay? So, there were... Most people were under nothing last time now, okay? So, the client said to reach there at, like, a certain time. Okay, I was, I think, 10 minutes late. When I went there, I was like, oh, sorry, sorry, like, is it okay? Is everyone here already? Then they said, right, out of the nine bloggers that were supposed to be there, all of them are hell girls, okay? Like, there was only two there. And the nothing manager was looking so horrified. She was just like, oh my god, what the fuck? Yeah. And then, right, out of those, like, um, okay, I cannot remember the exact number, lah, okay, but out of those people who were missing, there were, like, two that were, like, legit just... MIA? MIA. There were some that were MIA, and then there were some that were just super duper late, and there were some that say, like, oh, the meeting's at 2, can I come at 6? Like, they, they don't give a shit. Like, they are just... Don't care. They're probably stuck in court for money anyway. But, like, ah. so... They don't need this, you know. I don't know what they're doing, like, okay? But, like, yeah. It was just like, wow, this is really, really unprofessional. Yeah. And I think fast forward to now, uh, because people are actually trying to make this their job, mm. I think that you see a lot more very professional influencers. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And I am very surprised because, like, I started a, like, social media agency, la. So, like, now I'm starting to work with influencers as well. Um, and it's just, like, I, I see how professional they are and I think back about Yesterday, yeah, yeah, and it's, like, it's a lot, right a lot one, better, yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. So, wanna tell us a bit more about this? Uh, oh, right. Agency okay. you have yeah, started. Since Jessica Ooh, already knew news. about it. Um, yeah. So I haven't announced it yet, but I started a social media agency with um, uh, Boss Ming, uh, who's a partner, and also um, uh, my friend Na Hui Wen So she was with Nothing as the regional. She was in Net Century as regional director. Yeah. Um, so she has quit now next since, uh, or rather that's entry since. And um, yeah, we started this agency together and we're doing social media, uh, helping clients like plan their campaigns and like populating their IG page and everything. I think it's sort of a natural progression for me because um, after so many years of writing and posting things, I think that my forte is kind of knowing what would work and what wouldn't work. Mm. And I think uh, the two of my other partners are sort of the pioneers as yeah. well in this industry so it is a pretty good fit I think I guess nobody really knows social media like the three of us um, they know the business side of things I know the um, content side of things mm. yeah what to post and what how to make a campaign go successful or not lah. Yeah. so um, yeah so I, I guess I started this and it's like yeah I guess I cannot be like influencing forever so but I would say in the meantime, uh, that one I have to work a lot harder. Eh. Being an influencer is so easy. <laughs> yeah, I Don't think... say that. Oh, okay. Everything Are you... is so easy. No. Like that, okay, easy. fine. Yeah, this is Mongabong's pet peeve. Do not ever say she's lazy because she's super hardworking. But some of us are a bit lazy. <laughs> okay, but I, okay, I wouldn't say it's very easy because it comes very naturally to me. I guess put another person in my shoes and they might find it very difficult to always yeah. come out with fresh content, lah, right? So, fair enough. Um, but yeah, I think editing videos and all that, taking nice shots and it is tough. Lah. It's not mega tough. Like, you, like mining coal is tough, but it's, <laughs> it's tough. Lah. Yeah. yeah. That's cool Like mm. that the three of you have the agency now. Yep. Yeah, so hit them up for like campaigns, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. You can now, <laughs> you can now hire Sasha not only as like a, like a blogger or like an influencer, Instagrammer, you can now have her as a, what, your consultant of sorts, right? Yes, kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting to get like an yeah, insider first-hand. I do think that opinion. there's a very big void la, into this area because I think that there are a lot of businesses, they know that social media presence is very, very important, Yeah. Uh, but they don't know how to get there. Yeah. And they think it is just, oh, should I just post some nice pictures on my Instagram? What should I even call it? What's our, like, you know, um, what kind of video should I produce if I have a budget for advertising? You know, like, they don't know these things. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, can help it, them it, It's really it. true. Mm. Like, because we work with agencies and sometimes I feel like uh, the, the, the PR personnel that we communicate with, they mm. are just trying to do a job that they don't understand. Right. right yeah. yeah. So, because they don't have like the first hand yeah. experience of handling and going through the whole process correct, and seeing correct. the result. Yeah. So sometimes they will say things like, "Can you post and say this, 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 this?" And that is just because the client wants them mm. to have all these talking points in. But 
yeah, if you know what works and what doesn't work, you can tell the client, no, I'm sorry, this, you, you cannot say that, that would make the whole campaign fail, you know, yeah. Okay, so, mm. uh, perhaps to end off with, we can get some advice from you, okay? Advice? Yeah, speaking out of my own personal interests or so, how, do you have any advice, that how do you stay relevant after so long? Because wow. it's been so long, right? right. Like, since you started. I really and, don't know. But you see now, there's so many new faces popping out. Every month, every year, there's like mm. a new it girl or, of sorts or like somebody is who's that? popular. Okay. I mean, I, I think that is. Like, I'm, yeah, I don't I guess, really keep up yeah. with the trends. But there's, it's just an oversaturated market. Yeah. And everyone wants a slice of the pie. Right. How do you make sure you still got pie to eat? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, like, don't be afraid, law. Just keep posting things and it, it develop a love for sharing what you like. Don't just post things that you think people will like mm. to see. Post things that you actually want to share. And I think naturally, people will grow to love you. And not just like you because you post nice pictures. I feel like that that is not true influence. That's just, they just like your photos. They One day they you need their, yeah. their help, right? Yeah. For you set up a GoFundMe page because some somebody you love has a illness that you need help donating. Mm-hmm. They will fuck you. Then you keep posting about the, the person you know you love being ill, right? They will just be like, I'm gonna unfollow because I followed you for pretty photos of yeah, something crystals or like succulents huh? or uh-huh. like travel, you know, or you know, like and then they will just be like, Okay, since you're no longer posting your face, you're holding posting about your sick grandmother, I'm just gonna follow you because who cares about you? I don't even know your last name, you know? So yeah, I guess that's my advice. And um yeah, so if you have that going for you, even if the money doesn't come in you still have your followers and I think that that's really, really, to me, la, that's really, really valu- valuable and something that I treasure a lot. So, um, yeah, so even if the money doesn't come in, at least you have a backup thing that it's you have going for you. Yeah. To have the support of people who understand you, tr- truly, truly love you and support you. Yeah, that's really important. Mm. That's very good advice. At the end of the day, if you don't have the love for it, then nothing. Yeah. As the industry changes and everything, you won't continue. Uh. You yeah, just sort of like you just fade fizzle off. out. I mean, yeah. can lah. You can earn a living and just dump it after that lah. You know, that's not a bad idea, I guess. Mm. Mm. Anyway, I don't know if I've ever told you this before. I think I might have. But I think me and a lot of other maybe people around my age lah, like the, uh, a slight generation before you, mm. uh, as we were growing up, maybe when I was... The thin was when you started getting very popular with your blog, right? Mm. Uh, I feel like you inspired this wave of like uh, people who like to share. So in oh, a way, okay. like I'm, I'm, I, I feel it's quite a surreal moment now for me to be doing this pillow talk with her because there was a point uh, in my life where I was reading her blog and I was just thinking to myself, wow, this, you know, this bitch got balls. <laughs> and like, this, 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 this person, uh, I admire how much she's standing up and speaking up for herself, especially more than a decade ago in Singapore. Everyone is so conservative. Yeah. People don't really say what they mean. And sometimes they don't dare to speak what's on their mind. I ah. don't remember. But I think there was a girls, like that, yeah. girls were very, very meek. And you rarely see any opinions. Probably the most opinionated was like, who? Like Sumiko Tan. Who that? Oh, like wait. The, yeah, the, the like, editor? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Columnist, yeah. Because people took them, I guess, also more seriously from the traditional media, right? Yeah. Like, back, back then, who knew that what you see online could have such a impact? Yeah, right. so, yeah, I, I feel like I speak for a lot of other like-minded girls out there. Okay, we're no longer girls, like, I'm 27, so whoever is around my age, like, we were in the same era when we were growing up, and then she was sort of like the inspiration behind why we started blogging. Or not even blogging, you know, uh, the whole social media scene aside, just learning how to speak your mind and standing up for what you believe in. I think that you may not realize it, but uh, it really impacted more people than than you think. La. Yay, that's, Yay. Good. that's good. So, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to just basically say thanks. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, sometimes people do email me saying that, and I think it's great. La. I think it's good that people should be more opinionated, stand up for themselves. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Zula Pillow Talk. If you like what you see, don't forget to tell us what you think in the comment and also let us know who you want to see on the upcoming episode. Mm. And also, like, share and subscribe. Yay! Bye!